What is up, people of the internet? My name is Avery, and I've just finished my first year of UBC Engineering. Of the 13 absolutely insane courses that I took in my first year, one of these courses was Physics 170. In this video, I'm going to walk you through everything I wish I knew before I took this course, and some survival tips to help you get through it. And just as a disclaimer here, everything mentioned in this video is based on my experience from taking Physics 170 during the 2022-2023 school year. And all of the information information in this video is subject to change in the future so please don't get mad at me if your final exam is worth like your entire grade now instead of 60% like I had it and timestamps will be in the description below if you want to reference certain parts of this video again in the future so what is physics 170 all about in this course you will get an introduction to the theory and application of mechanics problems in physics and engineering the first half of this course will be dedicated to talking about the statics portion of mechanics. In plain terms, the things that don't move. And the second half of the course will be dedicated to discussing the dynamics portion of mechanics. Basically, the things that do move. And yes, some of this will be familiar territory to you, especially if you've taken AP Physics in high school. Now that we know what the course is about, let's get into how Physics 170 will be structured for any given week and the materials that you'll need for this course. Each week, you will have three hours of lectures and a one hour tutorial session for Physics 170. During the lectures, you'll be learning the main course concepts needed to complete the homework, tutorials, and exams. Depending on your professor, there will be a mix of theory, eye clicker questions, and practice problems that the professor may work through with you during the lectures. This may vary in the future, but in my year, all the lectures were recorded for future reference and the lecture slides were posted after each lecture. During your tutorial session, you will be assigned a practice problem to solve by the end of class and a TA will be present if you need help. Your submission must be written on paper and you'll be working in groups of four to solve the problem. To get full marks for your solution, it must contain a large, clear, and well-labeled diagram, and numerical answers must be expressed with three significant figures. I can't emphasize this enough, I lost one mark on one of my tutorial submissions because my diagram was ever so slightly too small, and I also lost a mark because I wrote my answers in four sig figs instead of three. Once your group has finished, you will hand in your submission to your TA for grading. In terms of homework for Physics 170, you will be completing weekly assignments using a site called Mastering Engineering. Depending on when you take Physics 170, either in the first or the second semester, and your professor, you could either have around three questions to complete, like I did, or up to 15. These homework problems are very similar to those covered in the lectures and the tutorials, and oftentimes they were just ripped straight from the textbook with some small number changes. In terms of the required materials needed for this course, I will say that Physics 170 does require you to buy the most shit out of all of the courses in first year UBC Engineering, as if paying over $600 to take this course wasn't enough. The first thing that is required to have in this course is a calculator, specifically one that can solve a 6x6 system of linear equations. I will have a list of calculators that the Physics 170 instructional team recommends in the description below, but the most common calculator used in Physics 170 is the Texas Instruments TI-84 Plus calculator. I personally have the TI-84 Plus CE, which stands for Color Edition, and it is so worth the extra $10-$15, and I got it for around $170. The next thing that you're going to need to buy for Physics 170 is an access code for Mastering Engineering on the UBC Bookstore website. You can purchase it either with or without a digital copy of the textbook that is associated with this course, which we will get into in a second. Personally, I only needed the access code for this course, and it cost me around $82.25. $82.25 for homework that is worth 5% of my grade. And the last thing that is nice to have in Physics 170 but not a necessity is the textbook that is associated with this course, which is the Engineering Mechanics, Statics, and Dynamics textbook by R.C. Hibbler. The current edition is the 14th edition, but older versions are still relevant to this day. You don't need to have the textbook for this course, but I just found it really helpful because a lot of the homework questions are directly from the textbook, and there are full solutions in the back of the book. Just don't tell anyone that I told you that. 
Also, there may or may not be a link to a free PDF download of the newest edition of this textbook in the description below. All right, now let's get into what you're actually going to learn in Physics 170. As I mentioned in the beginning of the video, some of this may be high score review for you, especially if you took AP Physics. But the concepts are simple enough for the average engineering student to learn, even if you haven't taken AP Physics before. In the statics portion of Physics 170, this part will be all about the things that don't move. We're talking about concepts such as particle equilibrium, moments of a force and moments of a couple, moments about axes, rigid body equilibrium, and friction. You'll be working a lot with 3D coordinates and vectors in this part of the course, so you'll definitely need a good understanding of the beginning concepts. In the dynamics portion of Physics 170, you'll be learning about the things that do move, discussing concepts such as rectilinear and curvilinear motion, normal and tangential components, polar coordinates, dependent and relative motion, equations of motion, work and energy, and momentum and impulse. In plain terms, ultimately we want to be able to calculate the directions, forces, speeds, accelerations, and energies of things that move. And that's pretty much everything that you're going to learn in Physics 170. In terms of the grading scheme for Physics 170, here's the breakdown of everything that you'll be graded on and the weights associated with each item. Honestly, it's very straightforward. Mastering Engineering homework is weighted at 5%, tutorial submissions are weighted at another 5%, your midterm exam is weighted at 30%, and your final exam is weighted at 60%. And yes, it is insane that 90% of your grade is coming from your exams. Your midterm exam is out of 30 marks and your final exam is out of 60 marks. Yes, that means that each mark on your exams is worth one percentage point of your overall grade. The midterm exam will have two 15 mark questions while the final exam will have four 15 mark questions. Each question will ask you to draw a large clear diagram and perform your calculations based on your diagram. Before the exams, the Physics 170 instructional team will post the last two to three years of exams for you to study from. And if I'm being brutally honest, most of the questions are exactly the same each year and you will pretty much know which types of questions will be on the exam before you take it. Oh, and I forgot to mention that you will be allowed one cheat sheet or information sheet as the Physics 170 instructional team calls it for each exam. You can use up to an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, double sided for your cheat sheet and it must be handwritten. You can't include any sample problems or problem solutions to sample problems on your cheat sheet and you don't get to keep your cheat sheet after your exam has been written. And if any of you are curious, this is the cheat sheet that I made for my final exam. All right, now on to some survival tips and advice for Physics 170. And I want to preface this section by saying that I was a pretty sh student in this course, so I know damn well what I should have done in order to get a better grade. My first and most important tip for surviving in Physics 170 is to do the additional practice problems alongside the assigned homework problems. And explaining this tip does require a little bit of story time. So in Physics 170, everyone kind of falls into one of two categories. Those that get it right off the bat and do very well, and those that, well, don't. I fell into the latter category, and it really showed when my midterm exam grade was 50%. Being brutally honest with you here, I actually cried a little bit after seeing my mark for that midterm, and mind you, I actually failed a midterm before this, and I didn't actually feel that bad. My deductive reasoning determined that I hadn't done nearly enough practice as I should have, considering the level of understanding that I was at. So in the two days leading up to the final exam that is worth 60% of my grade, I spent nine hours per day relearning all of Physics 170 by doing the extra practice problems that my professor had curated for each week that I had never bothered to look at up until that point. And guess what? I actually somewhat knew what I was doing now and I scored around an 85% on that exam. Probably my biggest clutch in first year. Had I not done the additional practice and studied just based on the past exams like I would have done normally, I probably would have failed this course or barely passed. Moral of the story here, there are a lot of practice problems out there. 
If you're like me and you don't grasp the concepts immediately, do the extra practice. Trust me, I suffer through it the hard way and I don't want you to suffer through it as well. The second tip that I have for Physics 170, which was mentioned in my general video about first year UBC engineering, is to try to take Physics 170 during the second semester of your first year. The reason why is that a lot of the fundamental concepts that you'll be learning in Physics 170 are covered in greater depth in another course that you'll already be taking in first year, Math 152. Physics 170 basically assumes that you already know these concepts that are discussed in the beginning of Math 152, and Math 152 is only offered in the second semester. So to save yourself from needing to do a lot of self-learning of these beginning concepts outside of class, find a timetable that has Physics 170 in the second semester, and it will remove a lot of headache for you. And the last tip that I have that has to do with your tutorial submissions and your exams is that when the question asks for a large, clear, and well-labeled diagram, you'd better draw a large, clear, and well-labeled diagram. You have no idea how many marks of loss because I've either forgot to label a force vector, my vector arrows were in the wrong direction, my diagram was ever so slightly too small, or I labeled one of the coordinates incorrectly correctly and it screwed up all of my calculations going forward. So take it from someone who has experienced all of this and learned from my mistakes. Also, don't forget, four significant figures for intermediate calculations, but three significant figures for numerical answers. I lost marks on this one as well. And for those of you who are wondering, I scored a 75% in Physics 170 and the class average for my section was 76%. Fun fact, this was the only course in my first year that I actually scored below the class average for, and I can thank Past Avery for his outstanding 50% score on the midterm exam for that. But thank goodness I was able to clutch up on the final to bring me back up to a somewhat decent mark. And that's about everything you need to know before going into Physics 170. I really, really hope this video can just help at least one person going into first year UBC engineering in the future, because I'll feel like my suffering in first year wasn't for nothing, and I definitely suffered a lot in this course. And as a thanks for sticking all the way to the end of the video, I will let you know that my next video will be about Math 152 which will definitely be an interesting video, especially when I talk about how the final exam went. As always, gently tap the like button, hit that subscribe button, and ring that notification bell to be notified whenever I release a new video. With that being said, I hope this video brought you value, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.